Fellow members of the Committee on the Arts and Humanities, it's a privilege and a great pleasure to be here today and to present our report. I know that I speak on behalf of the Committee in saying that it's been an honor to serve you first, to be a part of your distinguished administration, and to advise you on ways to provide support to cultural activities which are the creative foundation of this nation. We have served with pride and vigor in the hope that our accomplishments and recommendations may be a legacy for those who follow. We have provided a forum for discussion of national concerns. Bill Butcher of the Chase Manhattan Bank has talked to us about the corporate role in, in uh, nurturing the arts. Doug Dillon has talked about tax reform, David Rockefeller Jr. and Stan Katz about the charitable behavior of Americans and the genesis of philanthropy in this country. Chief Justice Berger talked about the bicentennial of the Constitution, and Raleigh Warner and many other committees have spoken about their particular interests. Roger Stevens will tell you that speaking passionately in one of our meetings is a very dangerous thing to do, for one can find oneself sort of charge in charge of a major program. Roger complained that the American theater was in terrible shape. Since that day, Roger has led our project, the Fund for New American Plays, to success. And in a two-year period, the fund has awarded $571,000 to nonprofit regional theaters and playwrights. In addition, we've developed partnership programs which provide for access to rural audiences for fine art, theater, and great books, to help awareness of the deterioration of our nation's precious artistic and historic collections, to introduce secondary school children to the joys of volunteerism and charitable giving, we prepared a survey on the hiring of liberal arts in the in American industry. We've created a major national program to uh, improve the teaching of humanities in the public schools. And we have tried to really learn more about the tradition of philanthropy, which is an example for the rest of the world. We are pleased that charitable giving in general has set records during your administration. In a recent survey, 80% of the chief executives interviewed said tax reform would not have an ad adverse impact on future corporate giving. Therefore, we applaud you for the benefits to the arts and humanities which have resulted from your administration's containment of inflation. Our cultural institutions have benefited from the restoration of fiscal stability under your guidance. We have met in many places, we have discussed many subjects, and we now recommend a few points for your attention, sir. One, the complex system of public and private funding that sustains the arts and humanities in the United States must be preserved and nurtured. Two, we reaffirm the particular importance of the charitable education and tax exemption to the vitality of the arts and humanities. Three, gifts of appreciated property are essential contributions for cultural institutions, and we therefore recommend a review of the aspects of the Tax Act which affects them. Four, we call for expanded and more detailed information to be developed with the Internal Revenue Service. Five, contributions from individuals, corporations, and foundations must be nurtured, increased, and broadened. And development and implementation of collaborative programs are terribly important and to be nurtured. And last year, presidential leadership is so essential to the arts and humanities. By your example, you have promoted awareness and support for American arts and the letters. We recommend continued presidential leadership through participation in cultural activities, formal recognition of achievements, advocacy of increased private support, presidential appointments of the highest quality. We will never be able to say enough as to the importance of our honorary chairman to all, to all of our efforts. And finally, on behalf of the committee, which has worked so hard, we want to thank you both, sir. We've been proud to serve you, and we, we salute you for everything. Thank you. Mr. President. Well, good afternoon to all of you, and you probably think I was invited to talk to you today because I have a little pull with the honorary chairman. <laughs> Seriously, I'm delighted to be with you today to 
receive the report of the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. And it comes at a time of reflection for me, a time to look back and see what we've done and how we did it. And I don't mind telling all of you how very proud I am of the work that you all have done and how proud I am that this administration has lived by the philosophy that when it comes to the arts and humanities, the nation is best when government intrudes the least. At the beginning of this administration, there were many who believed we were antagonistic to the arts because in our search for ways to cut the federal budget, we looked at arts funding as critically as we looked at everything else. But that idea was nonsense. In fact, what opposition there was to government funding for the arts was rooted in a deeply held conviction that it is not the place and should not be the place for government officials to determine what is good art and what is bad art. That path is a dangerous one for a democratic society, uh, for any society, to take. No, the determination of such things should be left to women and men of taste and education and indeed, finally, to history itself. And yet we faced a very real dilemma. If not the government, then who? How could the arts, the lively arts and the visual arts, spread across the country instead of being concentrated in just a few cities where there was enough private support? And that's where you all came in. This committee, which was created by executive order in 1982, has been instrumental in expanding arts funding in this country, devising innovative methods of fundraising from private sector sources in tandem with federal and state resources. And in the process, you've revolutionized the way Americans think about the arts and humanities and have made American business understand that a literate and cultured America is a better America, an America better able to compete internationally. With this system in place, we do not have to fear American artists becoming the handmaidens of government power. All of you have made concrete, lasting contributions to the arts and humanities, and the committee couldn't have been more ably served. One special note of thanks to your chairman, Andrew Heiskell, Andrew, your stewardship as chairman throughout the six years of the committee's existence has been invaluable. Nancy and I are especially delighted that you are here today. And one final word. I hope that the national dialogue about the central role played by Western culture in the very concept of the humanities will continue. Western culture represents the flowering of the best that has been thought and said by humankind and is every American's birthright. Let us never forget that, and let us aim to bring its bounties to every American. And let me assure you I'm going to read this and share it with George. So I thank you all again, and God bless you all. And now Nancy and I are going over there in front of the fireplace and hope that we'll have a chance to shake hands and have a picture taken with each one of you. Thank you. Nice. Nice to see you. Thank you. 
Casting like <laughs> I know two of us are going to be at liberty. 